start painting until I late start, really at about age 40, I am, um, I, uh, I love painting from a young age, loved going to see paintings, but um, I uh, was intimidated, I think, by the fact my, both my parents, my brother and sister painted, and they did landscapes and the like, and I couldn't do bugger all. And, but I loved it, and it wasn't really until, as I say, about the age of 40 that I decided it might be fun, just as a hobby, to do with my youngest daughter. I found an abstract painting in a magazine and thought it would be a great idea to have a hobby with her. So Geordie and I set about doing that. We bought all the kit and we had a terrific time, but she, she moved on to other things after two or three weeks. And, but I, I was smitten. I stayed with that. It was a very, very good fit with the kids. I was a lawyer then. So I'd trip off to work very early in the morning. They'd get themselves to school. I would pick them up early, go home, and try to cook for them, look after them, and then I'd go upstairs and paint. And um, it was a wonderful way. I was at home a lot, as I wanted to be, needed to be, and, and um, I loved it. Mainly do abstract and, uh, abstract and figurative work. But what I've been trying to do, because I still consider myself pretty new at this, having done it for 15 or so years, I like to work and work and work and find a new style. And if I do, I like to do three or four paintings in that style and then abandon the style and try to find something new. Well, the current style is the painting I have here, which um, I think will be painted over many, many times until I'm happy with it, if I'm ever happy with it but these are what I see as monks, religious people in a file, perhaps heading into church. Um, uh, and uh, I enjoy the colour of it. A lot of the paintings I do are, have a bit of a touch of religious about them. Um, perhaps because I won the Divinity Prize at school, I don't know, but um, um, one thing that can help with different styles is when I get commissioned to do work, it's a completely different way of painting because you try to block out of your mind that you're doing the work for someone else because it's important to always do it for yourself. So my way around commission work is to do perhaps three of the sort of style that they might tell me. Um, I do um, commission work uh, gladly, but I must say, and again, I keep sounding precious, I know, but. There are difficulties I've had to overcome with commission work. When I first started, I found all I was thinking about really was, um, would the person like it? I'd be thinking when I'm painting about the other person who'd commissioned, and that's, for me, no way to go about it. I'm um, much better when I'm just thinking of myself and of no others, not caring about what other people might think. And so my way around that was to get people in, firstly, um, get them to discuss what they might like, ask them not to give too much detail and uh, uh, perhaps show me an old picture of mine and, and, and then I would tell them that there was absolutely no requirement. There's no requirement for them to buy whatever the finished product is. The other thing I do is I tell them I'll do two or three of the same paintings because I find that frees me up a bit more, less thinking about what they were after and more able to go with it myself. And then uh, when eventually it's they're done and I'm happy with them. I call them in, they can look at all three paintings and um, I can tell them um, that if they don't buy any one of them, it's no problem because it means I've done three paintings that I like. But um, happily, so far, um, someone's always bought one or sometimes two, once even three. So I like to think it's a win-win. I just hate the thought of someone paying money for a painting they didn't really like, more out of politeness than anything. Uh, knowing when a painting's finished is difficult, I think, for all artists, and um, dare I say, it might be even more difficult for an abstract artist, because uh, with the landscape, at least you've got the hills and you've got the trees and the like, although doubtless it's difficult for them as well. But for me, it's very difficult, and I am uh, 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 to overcome this, uh, because I've mucked up many a painting by putting a brush stroke too many. It's funny how one brush stroke can just uh, wreck something, and. I've relied on my daughters. They get marched down, I show them the painting and they say, what do you think? And um, uh, more often than not, they'll just say, it's finished, leave it. And, um, and uh, I've learned through the School of Hard Knocks that that is very, very much uh, 
easier and more satisfactory to do as they say because I think most paintings can be wrecked by too much. It's probably a story a little bit about not knowing when a painting is finished or not but after my first exhibition ever which was exciting for me I had a big party at home straight after and a lot of people came and I found someone lurking in the semi-darkness of one of the rooms where I'd stacked a lot of unfinished paintings and didn't know the chap, went up to him, he introduced himself as Chester Osborne, who I had heard of and he's a lovely bloke as it turns out, he's of Darrenburg Winery in the queue. I went up to him and no sooner had he introduced himself than he said he wanted to buy three of the paintings and I pointed out to him that they were unfinished, to which Chester responded and I think um, this does show why well, you never know, really know. He said, I said, they're unfinished. He said, well, I'll be the judge of that. And um, so I probably sold them to him, um, part in cash, part in wine. But, um, and, and now a couple of them hang in the queue and he's bought a few more since, which is, is nice. But again, underlines, I'm not the best judge of when a painting is finished or not, particularly with abstract. So I try to bear that in mind very much, as I say, when my children tell me. Um, I'm not the one, I'm often the worst one to know. When I finish a painting, um, here I never tend to sign it, uh, I don't date it, um, certainly don't think about price or even exhibiting it, so I do need that help. Um, my daughters help me name the paintings, this is when it comes to exhibition time. Dating the paintings, I normally get that right, but I just don't write these things down, nor do I put my signature on a painting at the time I finish them and it somehow seems arrogant that the painting's actually finished but the time does come, they help me with that. It's not always easy to name a painting um, but with their collaboration um, it is made a lot better. Um, a lot better. Uh, sure, it's a, I think a largely funny story, um, odd story, perhaps a little bit sad but I recall we one day doing a big painting and um, and uh, I was feeling quite bleak about the refugee situation and um, I work for refugees and uh, volunteer from time to time, it's quite strong with me and I was um, not entirely, um, entirely sober either. It was um, an afternoon of painting, of painting a very bleak refugee painting behind barbed wires and at the end of it I was so despondent and so um, despondent with the painting that I just hid it, hid it in a shed and, and forgot about it. And two or three years later, when my daughters, as they would, would have parties, and a couple of the girls came running up, a couple of their friends, saying they'd found this wonderful painting in the shed. And I knew there wasn't a wonderful painting in the shed, but when they brought it out, it was that painting. And I must say, it looked, it looked really good to me. And I couldn't understand um, why. I hung it up, others came in, they loved it until my girlfriend at the time pointed out that the paint was running the wrong way up. And, and what I'd done was I'd hung the painting the wrong way up and instead of being refugees behind barbed wires, it was largely breasts. And I liked the painting so much I um, exhibited it and someone bought it and to my horror, um, a few days later they emailed me and asked if I could tell the story of the painting. I was very much in two minds as to whether to tell them the, the real story, which, as I say, had some sadness about it, but in the end, I told them honestly how it had been hung the wrong way, and, and a day later after telling them that, they um, came back and said that I was right, that it was far better off as breasts. One of the things I do miss since I've become an artist is uh, visiting galleries, getting books on art, magazines, and um, even knocking about with other artists um, um, and it's kind of pathetic really. Um, I don't want to be influenced by other artists. I still feel after 15 or so years that I'm new at this and I want to use the opportunity to develop different styles um, of my own. And it's the original idea of the styles that probably is foremost in my mind with art. And that's why I love abstract art because I see original ideas in it. And, that's not to downplay other forms of art, of course, but I'm just saying what works for me. So um, it does, I know, sound ridiculous, and yes, I do miss going to galleries. Lack of influence, of course, it's a hopeless cause because even if you do independently come up with something original, 
You'll find it's been done many times before, but anyway, that's what I strive for, and that's why I keep trying to change styles. So there, that's my, um, uh, that's my story with that.